Hello people, uh, today I'm going to do a pineapple wine because I've not done a pineapple wine before. Uh, it's that simple. I've got cheap juice. I, I did go to Asda specifically to get six pineapples, but they didn't have any in stock, unfortunately. Uh, they were the same price as this, and although this has got 50% added water, the actual recipe that was for real pineapple fruit called for uh, three quarters of a gallon of water anyway. So if anything, this should be better. It should be a little bit more thicker. Uh, I've just got some normal uh, wine yeast there, some citric acid, some pectolase, and a quarter of a bag of sugar, and all the damage on. I'm just gonna dump this out. The most important thing with wine making is that everything's sterilized, everything is clean, and uh, there's no risk of bacteria. Uh, I, I normally I'd leave it in there for half an hour to an hour, uh, I've left this in there for about five hours uh, as I've been out and just recently got in. Um, but we need the scissors. So there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with using. There's nothing wrong with using. Uh, there's nothing wrong with using cheap juice. Uh, there really isn't. By all means, you can go and buy the. Uh, you can go and buy a funnel, which I've got, but for some reason didn't sterilise it, so not enough time now. But yeah, this is this is thick. It's thicker than what I thought it would be, considering that it says on the label it's 50% water. Uh, but you know, you can buy whatever juice you want. This is this is going to hopefully be a little bit more better. This is going to be better than uh, buying pineapples as you get more for your money. So yeah, I'm just going to continue. You know, this is pretty straightforward, pretty basic stuff. Put some juice in there. And so yeah, this is this is a pretty basic recipe. Uh, the one that I found online called for real pineapples, as I said, I couldn't get hold of any. Um, but also called for three quarters of a gallon of water. So I should have I should have more pineapple here than if I'd have used real pineapple, which is just crazy. But I Um, whew, very, very, very fine. So I've got two in there at the minute. I'm going to go straight in with the sugar. It's just literally a quarter of a bag. It ain't rocket science. This is a, it's not a kit. It's a really dead, dead easy, simple recipe. Oh, this is going to be, this is going to be, this is going to be messy. Oh shit. Okay, as long as the majority of sugar gets in the demijohn. <laughs> as long as you get the majority of sugar in the demijohn and you don't make a big mess like I've just done, uh, you should be fine. I've got some dental wipes somewhere, but for now I'm just going to get a bit of kitchen towel in the sanitizer. Get the majority of that off the top. You can see all the sugars in the bottom now. That's going to need a shake two, maybe three times. Uh, but yeah, dead easy recipe. Dead easy recipe. From what I've read, anyway, it's basically fermenting juice. So, some citric acid. It called for two teaspoons. That was a bit of a stimpy spoon. I am rushing a little bit because <laughs> I'm making another wine straight after this. This was just such an easy one, such an easy recipe to do. I thought I'd just you know get it done. I 
pack the base. I normally use a quarter of a teaspoon because it does go quite far. But yeah, for this one, a little under a teaspoon should do. Glycerin. Uh, Glycerin, which I keep in the fridge along with a couple of other things. Uh, vanilla, I'm, I'm yet to use. And uh, listen, it called for it. Uh, it's about just under half. A couple of tablespoons of that should be good. I've been reviewing this pineapple wine all day because I thought you couldn't ferment out pineapple. I thought there was something in it. Um, a kind of pectin that doesn't break down, you end up with a really cloudy result every time. But from what I read, that's when you start adding in all of your additives, etc. Tannins, and apparently, tannins do not belong in pineapple wine. So, I'm not going to do any. You can buy tannins, or you can literally uh, make yourself a cup of tea. Just fill the mug quarter way up with water, tea bag, no milk obviously, no sugar obviously, uh, and just make it really, really strong. Let it cool down and pour it in. And that would be your tannins, which is like a, it's like a, on your tongue, like, mm, mm, mm. It's the easiest way to tell you what tannins are. <laughs> Plus, it's a good way to get a little bit of exercise as well. Look at the froth in there. Woo! That looks like a really cheap lager. <laughs> and uh, I'm just going to do a hydrometer reading. Okay. So, this is my messy workstation. I'm going to make it even more messy now. Probably a little bit more than I needed. But hey ho. No, nah, it was fine. So, just adjust this camera. Ah, what's this reading? See, there's a lot of froth in here, it's getting stuck to the sides already. I have to wait until it settles down a little bit. That is really, 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 really cloudy. Ah, uh, where are we? Where are we? One point seven zero, which it says on the other side is ten percent. Ten percent is fine if it all ferments out. I'm not looking for a strong wine. I'm just looking for a wine. Um, some people don't pour it back in <laughs> like I said as long as everything is clean and sanitized why not uh, okay straighten the bung half filled with uh, stars there Place the top on. And that's it. It's a really, really cloudy mixture. It's got a massive head on it. Uh, it's freezing cold in my house at the minute. I'm going to get my heat belt slash rod uh, that I recently got for a pound that works. And I'm going to stick him in there. Uh, what is it? 25 past 9. Come back about 10. See if he's warmed up. Do a temperature reading. 21, 22 degrees should be good. Uh, I normally just nail that every time. It's just, this, this just. I'm so good at this now. Not really. Um, but yeah, I'm going to come back uh, and then pitch the yeast. Uh, yeah, that's that.